So if you've been following these videos, you'll know that I've been using the Heisig method to learn to read and write Chinese characters uh, up to this point. But I recently had an experience that I thought I'd talk about on this video because I think it's very informative. Now, one of the criticisms that I've heard of Heisig from the beginning is that you spend a lot of time learning characters that are not necessarily useful to you. And for a long time I thought, well that's okay because I'm trying to build a foundation and the most important thing given the volume of the task, the size of the task of learning Chinese, the most important thing is to have a system that you can follow because in the long run, getting started and making progress is the most important thing of all. It's been working pretty well for me. I've covered around four or 500 characters, but I recently started to think, well, I need to start to read and, uh, read and write more in context. And so I started using some frequency lists of like the most commonly used Chinese characters and going through those on the Scritter app. And I realized that virtually nothing of what I'd been learning from Heisig was applicable um, to the most commonly used Chinese characters. And this is a problem for someone like me who wants to um, learn quickly. So there was this character, which for some reason I struggled for a long time to remember using the Heisig method. The meaning that Heisig gives to this character is bullseye. Yeah, bullseye. Now, I don't know really what this has to do with bullseye. I don't know how this character is used, nothing. And I had to come up with this ridiculous mnemonic in my mind of a kind of white ladle having something to do with a bullseye. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. And probably for that reason, I never managed to remember it properly uh, since the beginning. I mean, it was one of the first ones that I learned. Now, as soon as I started using the frequency list, <laughs> the Chinese frequency list, um, I think it was the kind of the scritter starters list actually that I started to revise. I came across this and I realized <laughs> that you can actually, that this is a, one of the most common Chinese characters and it's used to form the possessive pronoun. So if you want to say my or yours or his or something like that. Now, if I'd known that at the start, or more to the point, if I had actually been reading or writing like just any Chinese from the start or from an early stage, I would have learned this right at the beginning with no problem whatsoever because the, the, the simple frequency of that character would have meant that I would have memorized it very, very quickly. So the clear implication for me now is that I need to tone down what I was doing with Heisig and start to uh, look and use real language in context. Now, it's not that like this is news to me. I've always known this, but my problem has been so far that finding anything to read in Chinese as a, a beginner, which I am, is has been extremely hard um, because everything is just too far above where I'm at. So I think what I'm going to be doing is starting to use um, use the same system of uh, of Heisig and and for input and the Scritter for output practice that I've been using so far, but instead to do it with um, frequency lists. So I would like to ask your advice for which frequency list should I be using? Should I be following the HSK? Is there another list I should use? I need a sort of systematic um, path to follow, and so I need a list of words that's going to make sense for me to learn, um, and that I'm going to be able to follow and uh, and, and and keep up. So I, I, please let me know in the comments what you would recommend. I'm expecting 50 or 60 different recommendations, and I'll probably ultimately end up picking something out of a hat. But nevertheless, but the one thing I do want to say is, I if I were to start again. I probably wouldn't do anything differently. I think I would still use Heisig. And the reason is, the really great thing I've got from Heisig, apart from the, the practice of putting together these mnemonics that really help you remember the characters, is that he's given meaning to the components. So the, the components that you saw in that character earlier on, the, which for him he calls, um, this, well this is the character for white and the character for ladle which is, I don't know to what extent ladle is actually, uh, to what extent that makes any sense in Chinese, but nevertheless, that is how I've been remembering it. And the labels and the names that he's been giving to these components has helped me form stories and create stories in my mind that make sense, thereby remembering the characters. So if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have the ability to put together mnemonics for the characters that I currently do. So I wouldn't trade that. I'd still do the same. Um, and the other problem is now for me is basically one of overwhelm and the size of the task because it's one thing understanding that 
I could have learned this possessive pronoun uh, very easily. But once you start to move beyond that, then obviously the frequency of the things that you learn starts to drop and you, it's a much harder task than to, uh, to see stuff often enough such that you can remember it. So I think I'm probably, I probably will keep up with Heisig simply because I do, it has worked so far and I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's just a bit of a reorientation or a realignment. So comments please, advice please are very much in need of it right now. Hope that was interesting and see you in the next video.